So what does this $800 Ruger Precision have in common with this rifle back here that costs four times as much? Well, they both shoot a six millimeter Creedmoor and they both finish a couple spots next to each other at the local PRS matches. So today I'll be talking to you guys about pros, cons, both rifles, what you get, what you miss out on, and try to answer some questions and give you some thoughts on which one might make sense for you. If you're a beginner, if you're new to the sport, looking to get into it, trying to see what makes the most sense for you, what you should spend your money on. So I'm not going to really review the Ruger. There are plenty of videos that do that. So I'll just go over some of the things that I think are relevant to the comparison. So some of the cool things that you get with the Ruger, for example, folding stock is typically a couple hundred dollars if not more upcharge on a 700 pattern rifle, like a Manor stock, for example. So that's nice, makes it, easy to, makes it easy to store. You get a three lug action, which on the plus side is very quick, gives you plenty of room between the belt, the scope, and your hand when you run the bolt. It's a nice feature. You get a lot of AR parts, comp, uh, get a lot of AR parts that work with the rifle, so like grips, stocks. It does take AR S25 mags, M1A mags as well, AI mags, we'll go over those in a second. Takes AR style handguards, and it also takes, a has a barrel nut, so you can change the barrel at home. You just need some go, no-go gauges. And you can order the barrel online from a bunch of places. Brownells, uh, Keystone Accuracy, where I got my barrel from. And they tend to be pretty affordable and you have a lot of options. And uh, changing your barrel at home by yourself with the gunsmith is pretty, pretty nice. Especially when you're shooting like a fast burning six mil, like a six creed more, where you know, it goes through barrels pretty quickly. It is a fairly light rifle when you know competition terms so you could probably flex it into like a hunting rifle if you wanted to but on the minus side a light rifle isn't ideal for a competition gun you typically want something heavier settles in nicely makes it easy to spot your own shots just name the game in prs now the biggest the biggest complaint that you'll see about Rugers are that the action isn't very smooth. It's a little bit notchy. And the bolt lift is pretty, it's pretty heavy. So when you're trying to shoot fast and you know, spy your own hits, if you work the bolt, bolt too fast, too rough, throw you off target. If you're in high magnification, and again, you're you know, not set just perfectly, work a little bit too hard, it can throw you off target off barricades, you know, it's nothing that you can't overcome. It is just when you pick up like a custom rifle or a custom quote unquote rifle, that's one of the first things you'll notice is the action feels so much better. Is that worth four times the price of admission? You know, that's up to you. That's by far the biggest thing that people complain about. On that note, speaking about the action, you know, is this a big deal? Fit and finish, some people it is. They'll complain about it all day. Others don't really care. I'm probably, I don't care. Uh, camp, but as you can see the bolt, you can see a lot of the tooling marks. And I'll show you the, the impacts there in a second. See the three lug design. Does that make it a little more notchy, maybe? Maybe. People do get these things, uh, all kinds of finishes, they get them fluted. And I'm sure that helps a little bit. The Gen 3s are nitrated, which again, I'm sure helps a little bit. We do, Damon does tend to run this one pretty wet to make it a little bit smoother. That has the downside of attracting a little bit more dirt, carbon, whatever, making it a little bit rougher to run. So you have to clean it a little bit more, I'd say. 
the you know I mentioned it does it is like a bolt action AR in a way, and it is a great rifle from the factory, but you do not have the aftermarket that an AR does or that a 700 pattern rifle does. So the trigger is great from the factory. You know you're looking at a two and a half pound trigger pull from the factory single stage, and 10 minutes in your basement, and you can get that down to a pound and a half. But you don't have that many aftermarket options so if you want to get you know a sub one pound trigger like many of the prs guns you'll see have you don't have that many options and it's going to get be hard to get there we had a timney that we put in it wasn't that great so we're back to this one you know and the runs just fine it's just that you're going to be a little bit short on certain certain aftermarket support items and speaking of that, I think, you know, the biggest pro for this gun is the fact that it's affordable. So, you know, this one was $800 from Grab a Gun uh, a while back. They had them on sale for a while. New ones are about 1000 or so. And I think what, if you just, you know, put a brake on it like that one has, maybe a new grip and a new bolt handle and just kind of keep it as close as you can to stock, that's when you get the most value out of it. I know it kind of... Obvious there, Captain Ivers there, but if you start, you know, changing the, the stock, the grip, trigger, do work to the bolt, bolt handle, rail, you change the barrel, maybe you get a fin different finish for the whole thing, and all of a sudden you can be looking at like a rifle that's two, two and a half thousand dollars, and you still are working within that same action that doesn't feel as good as something that you can build for two and a half thousand dollars. So I think, you know, nothing against modifying guns. I do it. Everybody does it. It's just that I think if you're doing this for a competition gun, you should really kind of plan ahead, see where you're going to be, and make sure you get your money's worth with something like this. And I think you get your money's worth by keeping it fairly stocked. And it is, you know, for the price point, it's a very capable rifle. Just a quick note on mags. Before we move on, it does feed in from, you know, SR25 mags, M1A mags. Are you ready? Ready? Whoa, Maybe the 60s, but they don't work too well here. AI mags come in different sizes, different flavors. AI mags aren't ideal, at least in this six mil. That my rifle doesn't like those either. We found that this arc mag with the follower that sticks out work really well, makes it easy to single feed. They just feed great. For comparison, this is a 12 round MDT, which works very well too, but you can see the size comparison there and versus a 10 round mag pull these five rounders will not lock in is that a big deal not for prs probably will never be using that mag anyway so let's talk about what you get for four times the money So out there in the gun world, I think you have a couple pattern guns that are just common. Everybody in the grandma makes one. AR-15s, 1022s, you know, like Glock 17s even now, Glock 19s. And I think for bolt action, it's the 700. So this is a 700 pattern rifle. It takes 700 triggers, 700 stocks. That means you have a huge aftermarket because any company that's building a custom action is going to make it fit those parameters so you get a ton of aftermarket support this is a trigger tech trigger i think it's at around 12 ounces it can go lighter than that and there's more triggers than i can name that are available for it same with the stock this is a manners you can get everything from a krg bravo in the 300 range you can get a mcmillan manners krg 
NPA, J. Allen, you know, they're still around, AI, and it's just a huge, huge range of things you can do to this thing. So what else do you get here? You get the action is really smooth, very light bolt lift. It is a two lug action, so it's a 90 degree throw, but it's very smooth, very hard to bind. The body of the receiver is nitrated, as is the bolt. It's fluted on top, not on the bottom, to help with the, with the feeding. People complain online about the fact that the face of the bolt, you can see the machine marks. So that's the kind of fin finish we're talking about on something like this. The claim to fame on this action is that it's smooth and reliable. There are other actions like the fines where you can customize it any way you'd like. There are control round feed actions like the Bighorn. And again, you can get three lug actions, I think even four lug actions. There's just a ton of options out there, so whatever you'd like. These actions are so tightly made. The tolerances are so tight that any gunsmith can make you a barrel without seeing your action. They can just ship you a barrel, you torque it on, you're good to go. If you want to change calibers, you can order a bolt from Impact for 223 or short action magnum, for example. You get the whole bolt stick in your receiver, you're good to go. Now, the biggest con to this is obviously the price. You better know what you want or you'd be wasting a lot of money. But other than that, it's just it's it's a great system. You can really, you know, if you don't like AI mags, you can get actions that have AW mags, which, is, which are double stack. You can do a build for as low as 2,000. You can go up to, you know, three, four, five thousand. So whatever fits your budget as well. So like I was saying, you can build that Ruger for two, or you can get it up to two, two and a half thousand, where you can get something similar to this for that price as well. So you're gonna end up dumping all that money within, you know, 12 months. Consider, consider just building something from, from the get-go. Uh, Performance-wise, these are both 24-inch barrels. This is a Green Mountain blend chambered by Keystone Accuracy. It's a 24-inch barrel and 24 profile. Six screen more. The Ruger barrel is quite a bit lighter. It's also 24-inch. And out of one, two, three, four, five, six groups that the, I shot with the Ruger, I had two that were under an inch. Barnes 112 shot 1.85, Barnes 112 shot 1.6, Hornady 108 shot an inch, 0.586, and then 0.764. Hornady Black 105 shot 1.1. So I think, you know, you're talking three quarters to a minute accuracy. That's probably good enough, more than good enough. Especially, you know, I'm a fairly new shooter, so this is what I can do, but I think when you're on the clock and you're shooting off a of barricade during competition, that's plenty good enough. Targets are typically two, three MOA anyway, so you're more likely to cause the miss than the rifle. And then for my gun, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven groups, and one was barely over an inch. So it shoots everything a lot more consistently. Barnes shot 0.693. One, one inch, that's the worst one. Hornady 108, hovering around half an inch, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.59, and then Hornady Black, 0.72. The velocities were the same on both both barrels, so that's that, that wasn't an issue. And this is actually one of the cheapest barrels that you can find for this rifle. I think it's around $500 chambered. You can get them for seven, eight hundred dollars if it's a more premium blank. I might go there off with the next, next caliber after I burn this one out, but we'll see. You know, either way, just to sum it up, you're gonna finish very close to each other no matter what. With these two rifles, we've been shooting for the same amount of time. We go to the same competitions, and with never more than a couple space, a couple 
finishing spots apart, even though there is a clear, clear equipment difference. It just doesn't make you a better shooter. It might make the experience more enjoyable, easier. You might like the rifle more, but it's not gonna be, not gonna make or break you. So just go shoot whatever you have. We've shot with guys that have, you know, 708 Tikas with a sporter barrel and a duplex scope and they're holding their own during competition. So it's, it's really more you spend the money on training, spend the money on ammo. If you got some disposable income, go ahead and build something like this. But just otherwise I would keep whatever rifle you get, be it Bergara, Tika, I would keep those personally close to stock and just shoot the hell out of them. That's my two cents. Do let me know why I'm wrong in the comments. I'll be sure to hit the like button for those things. Thank you.